Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. I thought today we would talk about kind of the cycle of War Thunder. One of the interesting things we've seen over the last month or so is the cycle of it has been kind of insane, and there's been a ton of stuff going on, but there has been a change in how things have been going, uh, even over this previous time, compared to, let's say, the last year, or even the years before, and it could easily indicate stuff kind of going forward and being different. First of all, I'd like to hear some opinions uh, from you about the Object 292 event, the Call of the Dragon. Like, how is it going? How is it feeling uh, in general? And uh, do you, is the grind okay? Is it not okay? You know, are you struggling with it? What's the kind of synopsis? For me, uh, I, I think the event's going pretty good. You know, I'm able to do it alongside a lot of the Pages of History stuff. You know, the grind itself hasn't really been that bad. As somebody who's used to like 75k a day or 120k every two days, you know, 45k doesn't seem too bad. Uh, I just don't like the fact that Call of the Dragon has pretty much nothing to do with the Object 292, and also at the same time, um, the 292 I feel like should have just been a standard uh, vehicle uh, in the tech tree. Just would have been more interesting uh, than stuff uh, such as, uh, you know, or, or it would have been more interesting as a tech tree vehicle because it offers something different uh, with its gun compared to a lot of the other Soviet vehicles that feel pretty much the same in how you play them all. Uh, so, generally, um, what I want to talk about, though, is the cycle. Uh, oh, by the way, the Roy Volk's back. Uh, so, they brought it back in um, yesterday. Uh, it came out a bit late yesterday, but it's here to stay. So, you don't have to pick it up over the next few days. It's going to be here as a GE vehicle for the British tech tree. Of course, the Roy Valk is very good. It has some lovely weapon systems and defensive systems, and also, it will be on sale when the GE sales happen. So, if you don't want to pick it up straight away, you know, you can pick it up later on, probably at half price, so make sure to check out for that. So, uh, the cycle is definitely changing in War Thunder, and it's changing in kind of an interesting way. If you have a look at the roadmap, if you have a look at the event cycle that they've talked about, if you have a look at the fact that they're bringing back old events, and also they're doing uh, these quite large specials now, uh, it seems like what they're doing is they're taking contents that they would have kind of uh, put in big lumps and spreading them out over the year. So, for example, if you have a look at the National Foundation Day in Japan, uh, this uh, kind of setup last year or years before would have been probably a decal, and that's about it. And then also the Lunar New Year, you might have a decal, a decoration, and that's about it. But both of these events now have a bunch of returning premiums, have some, some which are here to stay, some which are limited, and then also bundles on top of them of other vehicles that you can pick. And these are events that only are going for like two or three days. You also have, of course, the Razor bonus thing, which came out just before. Um, definitely timed uh, before these things. Uh, so, you know, you could set that stuff up. You also have the Guardian Angels event, which is back, which hasn't been around for the longest time, on top of stuff like the Page of History, the Call of the Dragon, the Royvalt coming back, and just a bunch of different things happening at the same time. But what is interesting is in War Thunder's history, what you would have is you'd have these big lumps of content. So you'd have the summer and winter event. You'd have the two crafting events. You'd have like the April Fool's event on top of a crafting event. And then maybe you'd have two separate events around February and then maybe around June, which was slightly different. Then you'd have the five major updates a year which would, you know, bang on top of everything, usually in March, uh, June, September, November, and December, right? So ramping up into the end of the year. But nowadays, because there is so much content in War Thunder, and because Gaijin have decided to remove stuff in the past, they have this opportunity to bring stuff back at, a, at will to be able to, you know, bring in a bunch of different stuff and make these events a lot larger than they may seem. For example, once again, for the National Foundation Day in Japan, instead of a decal just now, now you have like five or six other vehicles that could be there. You also have a mini event around it for the Lunar New Year. Now that you have the Call of the Dragon stuff, you have the loot boxes, you have the Object 292, you have the returning premiums, you have the bundles. You know, you have all of these things uh, which are just kind of sat there to all kind of interconnected between the event. And the real question is, 
the real question is, with all of this stuff, so how does this extend into the future? What we're seeing is a breakup of a lot of those kind of larger events, and they are spreading them out more between or over a period of a year. So instead of having a crafting event with four vehicles or three vehicles, then it's now going to be uh, four separate events, which are over the span of two and a half to three months, right? Stuff like that, for example. And the real question is, do they do this with other parts of their content too? Will we get to a point where instead of having five massive updates a year, maybe we get 10 updates which are basically half the size which kind of move around the meta a little bit more and keep people hyped up for the next thing. Is that something that in the future of War Thunder will happen? These events and also these updates get larger and larger and larger and more and more stuff is in the game, moved around the game, rotated in the game, meaning that you can do stuff like this. I mean, the fact that they're able to bring back premium vehicles, which were removed last year, uh, kind of shows, you know, what you're able to do all around the place. It's pretty nuts um, at the end of the day, if you have a look at how many moving cogs and how many moving parts are happening right now. But the major thing, at least for me, that I'm focusing on is just to kind of see what this next stage is. We've seen with the roadmap, we've seen with this kind of changing of how they uh, look at future content, how is that going to affect the the stuff that used to happen in the past? So for example, the crafting events have already been affected. They're gone, right? <laughs> They're done. But there's all that infrastructure there for stuff like the crafting events, the workshop, and also a bunch of other parts of the game. A bunch of time and effort went into creating these things. So what happens when you remove something like that? Where does it go? Then, at the same time, uh, you have stuff like World War Mode, where it was something which has had, once again, a lot of time and effort put into it. What do you end up doing with that? Do you take those types of things and do you kind of elongate them over periods of time? So therefore the grind itself for them isn't as bad as it was before, which was definitely leading to negativity. And therefore people will see it in a slightly different light. Do you make it a bit more casual? Do you tag it on to something else? Kind of like how we've talked about, you know, tagging on the crafting event stuff to the battle pass. Is that something that people would be interested in? Kind of a build a tank scenario, which doesn't happen over a period of a week, but instead happens over a period of a battle pass. Maybe that would be a way of introducing a fourth vehicle to a battle pass, and then eventually removing a vehicle from the battle pass. So now you have three vehicles, but one of them you have to kind of use the workshop in order to get. All of these types of things elongate the game, right? They take stuff that you've had previously from smaller periods of time and extend them over the periods of time, making it a little bit easier for people to get, but also at the, at the same time, sending it up in a way so people have to play the game over more periods of time, over, you know, an extended period, which can lead to more burnouts, of course, because then there isn't any breaks in the calendar. But we're already at the time in War Thunder where, you know, in January and February is usually kind of a quiet time. That's not what's happened over <laughs> January, February this year. Instead, you've had a ton of content kind of pushed all over the place. So if this is kind of a sign of things to come, my more guess is we'll get all of the major content stuff in the major five updates and also the event stuff on top of it, and then they're just going to keep increasing stuff over and over and over again instead of spreading it out, which, at least to me, would make more sense. I think this is actually going to lead to some interesting things. Technically, you have more stuff going on, right? You have more events, you have more things to uh, look at, but also, at the same time, it's going to lead to more burnout from people because, you know, they're just going to get overwhelmed with how many things are going on. We are very much away from the time where you would only get one or two updates a year in a video game. Now everything is constant to keep your attention going. And from Gadgen's point of view, it's working, right? Like they have a ton of uh, different, you know, they have a ton of uh, different marketing things going on. And the amount of people who are playing the game is massive, especially around this time of year when usually it decreases. It's crazy to think about, and hopefully in the future, there's a little bit of a slowdown in things. 
uh, just because, as I said, it can be overwhelming, at least to me. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd like to thank Schnitzel Stroker, Brendan Quinn, Vilnaeus, Character Fuel, Carrion Crow, Nicholas Richardson, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, B. Young, Opium Prime, Masonocrats, Lafouche, Alan Hacker, Sam Arslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R. for supporting the channel.